Hey everybody, and welcome once again to Nose in the Book, a Bible reading commentary with me, your host, Pastor Justin Van Reed. So great to be with you for the next few minutes as we take a look at 2 Chronicles 25, Revelation chapter 12, Zechariah chapter 8, and Gospel of John chapter 11. If you have any questions or comments about today's readings, I would invite you to post those in the comment section below. And otherwise, let's take a look at uh, what we've got. So, 2 Chronicles chapter 25 here is about the reign of Amaziah, who is 25 years old when he becomes king, and he's going to reign, as it says, for 29 years in Jerusalem. And uh, here you have a kind of mixed uh, bag, if you will, with Amaziah's reign. As it says, he did what is pleasing in the Lord's sight, but not wholeheartedly. And, uh, and so, uh, you read here that he executed the officials who had assassinated his father, uh, but he doesn't kill the children of the assassins. Why? Because he obeyed the command of the Lord as written in the law of Moses. Parents must not be put to death for the sins of their children. So there he goes, the aspect you have, an you know, example of him uh, following the word of God. Um, then you have uh, this next paragraph where he organizes uh, the army and takes a census, uh, but after doing so, uh, a man of God, so a prophet, comes to him and says, do not hire troops from Israel, for the Lord is not with Israel. He will not help those people of Ephraim. So talking about the, the, northern, uh, the northern kingdom. He says, if you, uh, if you let them go with your troops into battle, you'll be defeated by the enemy no matter how well you fight. So this is, you know, these, these border tribes, right? Kind of, you know, you had your like Judah, obviously, and you have your hardcore northern tribes in the, in the you know, in, around Samaria. But then you, you got some tribes in the, in the middle, um, you know, that are just kind of out there and, and individuals, you know, might have their allegiance one way or another, um, and so Amaziah asked the prophet, what about all the silver I paid to hire the army of Israel? And the prophet says, the Lord's able to give you much more than this. So he discharged the hired troops, sent them back to Ephraim. Ephraim is right there uh, just above uh, Judah and Benjamin. Um, and so this makes them angry with Judah. And so they go home and they're mad. Um, and meanwhile, we read of Amaziah uh, having several uh, battles here uh, against uh, like the Edomites, for example. And um, when King uh, Amaziah returns from the battle with the Edomites, um, he brings idols from the Edomites, and he sets them up as his own gods. So here you see this lack of wholeheartedness and this move from, you know, doing what was honoring to the Lord, right, obedient to the Lord, and, um, you know, keeping the word of God, and then moving here into idolatry unfortunately. And so, of course, this makes the Lord very angry, and he sends a prophet to ask, why do you turn to gods who cannot even save their own people from you? And the king says, since when have I made you the king's counselor? Be quiet now before I have you killed. So the prophet stops and says, all right, I know that God is determined to destroy you because you've done this and have re refused to accept my counsel. And uh, ultimately, Amaziah goes to battle against um, Jehoash of Israel uh, but Jehoash replies, you know, basically, uh, you know, watch, be, be careful what you, what you wish for, if you will. He says, why, why stir up trouble that will only bring disaster on you and the people of Judah? But Amaziah refuses to listen. And again, here you have the providence of God involved in this. It says God was determined to destroy him for taking the gods of the Edomites and setting them up as his own gods. So the two armies come up against each other, Judah against uh, Israel. And um, Jehoash of Israel captures Amaziah, um, demolishes a portion of Jerusalem's wall, carries off gold and silver from the temple. Uh, and then Amaziah, it says, lived for 15 years after the death of Jehoash of Israel. And uh, Amaziah turned away from the Lord. And then there was a conspiracy against his life, and he fled to Lachish, for his enemies sent assassins after him, and they killed him there. So it's a really kind of sad story in the end. All right, Revelation chapter 12, and here you have a, a really fascinating vision here in heaven. Um, almost sounds as though it's not just a futuristic vision. It sounds as though it's a, kind of a whole-encompassing 
vision because he says, you know, just look at the language of it, right? He sees this woman uh, clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. And so you wonder, well, 12 stars makes you think 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, she was pregnant. She cried out because of her labor pains and the agony of giving birth. Then I witnessed in heaven another event. I saw a large red dragon with seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns on his heads, and his tail swept away one-third of the stars in the sky, threw them to earth. And he stood in front of the woman as she was about to give birth, ready to devour her baby as soon as it was born. It sounds like some kind of uh, fall from heaven, a rebellion in heaven here, by you know what's described as a red dragon. Um, and then verse 5, she gives birth to a son... And notice it says, who was to rule all nations with an iron rod. And her child was snatched away from the dragon, was caught up to God and to his throne. So, again, kind of sounds like, you know, are we talking about Christ here? The woman fled into the wilderness where God had prepared a place to care for her for 1260 days. So you get, it's just really hard to uh, say, you know, hard and fast what it is that's being pictured here. Because then there's this war in heaven, right? And Michael and his angels fight against the dragon, and the dragon loses the battle, and he, and notice his angels, were forced out of heaven. And it says, this great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to earth with all his angels. And you kind of wonder if these verses are not some kind of like picture of what has happened historically. Um, it's very fascinating. Um, then a, a voice shouts, that uh, salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ has come for the accuser has been thrown down to earth, the one who accuses them before our God day and night. Uh, and they've been defeated by the blood uh, of the lamb. They, they have defeated him by the blood of the lamb and their testimony. Um, but terror, it says, on the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you knowing he has little time. So now it kind of sounds as this, like describing the church age, or is this describing a future period? It says, when the dragon realized he had been thrown down, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. So he wondered, is this like persecution against the followers of, uh, of God? But she was given two wings, and so she could fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness. Then she would be cared for and protected from the dragon for a time, times, and half a time. And I can't really, uh, it's, it's so difficult to understand, right? Dragon tried to drown the woman with a flood of water, but the earth opened it up and, and swallowed it. And so the dragon was angry. And so notice he declared war against the rest of her children who are described as all who keep God's commands and maintain the testimony of Jesus. Very fascinating. All right, Zechariah chapter 8. And um, just real quick here, another message from the Lord to Zechariah. This is what the Lord says. My love for Mount Zion is passionate and strong. I'm consumed with passion for Jerusalem. Um you know, this is very positive here, all throughout promised blessings, right? All this may seem impossible to you. You're only a small remnant, but is it impossible for me, says the Lord? Um, you know, he says, I'm going to rescue my people. I'm going to bring them back. Uh, be strong, so finish the task. Uh, ever since laying the foundation of the temple, you have heard what the prophets have been saying about completing the building, so, you know, do so. Um, he says, I'm planting seeds of peace and prosperity among you. So it's just pictures this future uh, blessing and hope here. All right, uh, John chapter 11 then, and right, great uh, chapter, powerful story here of the death of Jesus' friend Lazarus, and it's so intentional what Jesus does here and the way in which he does it, how he delays and Lazarus dies, and then when he comes and he hears uh, from uh, Martha, when, you know, you know, she's like, if you had of been here, if you if you come sooner, my brother would not have died, right? She, she recognized the healing power of Jesus, but then adds this, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. So what is she implying? Well, he, he answers and says, well, your brother will rise again. And her first thought goes to, at the last day, the general resurrection, when everyone will rise. And, and, and Jesus says, anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. And everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. Do you believe this? So going on two levels here, right? Um, anyone who believes in me will never spiritually die, right? They'll live eternally. Um, and so they'll live even after dying. Everyone who lives and believes in me will, will never die. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, and of course, Jesus goes on here. He raises Lazarus. And then after this, the end of the chapter talks about this plot to kill Jesus. So we've, we've come already here 
uh, to very close to the last week of, of Jesus' life, which is going to take up a significant portion of John's, uh, the, the rest of John's gospel here. All right, that's all we have uh, time for today. Uh, thanks for being with me as we took a look at Second Chronicles 25, Revelation 12, Zechariah 8, and John chapter 11. Uh, until next time, keep your eyes on the Lord and your nose in the book. <laughs>